Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll be doing another book review. I'll be reviewing the book Tool of War by Paolo Bacigalupi. And it's a book that I received through the novel. I received it as a advanced reader's copy to do a review on it. So I'll be doing this review today. Anyways, let's get started. So as always, I will be doing the non-spoiler section. And actually, before we get started, when I first got this book I didn't realize that this was actually book three of a series and I never heard of the author previously and I never heard of his previous books either so when I started reading through this book I felt that I was actually missing out on something and quickly googled it realized that this is actually book three and went to the library read through the first two books as quickly as possible before I was able to actually read through this book so it took me a little bit longer than I expected just to finish it because I was had, had to start from the beginning of the series. But anyways, moving on to the actual non-spoiler section of this review. So it's actually a good thing that I went ahead and read the first two books because there were a lot of elements and plots that were in the first two books that are very prevalent in this third one as well. So if you have not read the first two books, I suggest reading them before tackling this third book. So if you have not read the first two books, I would suggest uh, skipping over this review entirely because I will be referring to some spoilers from the first two books in this non-spoiler summary for this third book. If that's confusing, I feel like that's kind of confusing. But regardless, what I'm trying to say is, if you have not read the first two books, my non-spoiler summary for the third book will spoil some aspects of the first two books. So just as an FYI. But anyways, moving on to the non-spoiler summary. So at the end of the second book, which is Drowned Cities, you're left with Tool kind of trying to take over Drowned Cities. And at the beginning of Tool of War, he just succeeded in doing just that. And just when Tool is starting to actually rebuild the area, Mercier, one of the largest companies in the world at this moment, decides to throw a bomb at him with the hopes of actually destroying him once and for all. And Tool, of course, being as this amazing man-made creature who is actually half man and half animal, somehow he miraculously survives but is severely weakened. And he somehow manages to attach himself to the ship where his good friend Malia, who is actually one of the main characters in the second book, is on and manages to escape from this wreck. And of course, Mercier, this company, once one of their analysts, specifically a girl called Jones, this junior analyst, she discovers that Tool is actually not dead and actually escaped from this wreckage, decides to pursue him to actually destroy him. And Jones is not even sure why her superior, General Karoa, is so fixated on destroying Tool. To her, Tool is just another augment, which by the way is super common in this series. They're just half man, half beast creatures. And she's not sure why he is worth all of the resources devoted to destroying him, as well as all the risk in bombing areas that have peace treaties on. Again, Mercier is a huge company, so a lot of the peace treaties are directly related to them as well. So bombing areas that have peace treaties with them involved is not exactly the best idea. And as the story progresses, Naylor and Nita, who are actually introduced in the first book and they're the main characters there, and because of their relationship with Tool in the past, they decide to help him as best as they could. And as the book continues, the origin between Tool and General Karoa is revealed and you realize why exactly is Tool so special and why the General is so fixated and determined on killing him. So that's generally what this book is about. It's very, very uh, fast-paced and very action-packed. And I'm also glad to see the reappearances of the previous characters. I remember reading from book one, Naylor and Nita. I was wondering why they didn't show up at all for book two, so I'm glad that they were finally here for book three. I also really like reading more about Tool's history because he was the first, he was always in the books. The first book he was there, the second book he was also there. And even though he wasn't a main character in the first book, he was definitely an intriguing character. Um, you can definitely tell you weren't sure why he was so special and I'm glad that this book finally managed to reveal all of his history and why he's so different compared to the other augments in this series. So if this book sounds interesting, definitely go check it out and read it and then continue on with me as we go on to the spoiler section of this review. So before I get on to like the actual spoilers, I guess, 
I just want to say that I was really glad of the reappearances of all the previous characters. I was specifically happy to see Naylor and Nita because I really enjoyed them in the first book. I was really curious to see what would become of them. And this third book, when they appeared, they're actually much more mature. You see that, you know, years, I'm assuming years have passed since their experience of Tool. And you see what they're up to now. And I don't know, I just really enjoyed that part and their little minor role in this book. Another two characters I really liked in this book, actually they appeared in the second book, is Malia and Ogo. They actually started back in the first, the second book, when they first knew each other, they were actually enemies, and by the time this book rolled around and you see the dynamic change, you see how much respect they have for each other, and I would even call them like kind of lovers in a way from their interaction. I don't think it's ever really stated but it's hinted at least to me that there's something going on between the two of them so when the whole situation with Oko and how he lost his legs happened I was so devastated to hear that because well to read that because I was just like oh no Malia like that sucks and like she was so devastated as well to find out because to her I mean she actually thought that he died and then it wasn't until the really really end that you realize that oh actually he survived and he had lost both of his legs and going on back to Tool, actually when he was re like when his history was revealed and what he can actually do and the fact that he was able to actually command all the other augments, my first thought was, okay, so what can this guy not do? He has been shot at, he has been bombed at, he has been like basically poisoned, I don't even know, like everything has happened, anything possible to kill this person has been done and somehow he managed to survive he's also he can also breathe underwater for like 10-15 minutes he's also incredibly strong very superior in strength and abilities and now you're telling me that he can actually command all the other augments so just as an FYI augments are creatures in this series that are man-made they usually take either half man and half beast uh, usually DNA comes from um, cheetahs, lions, dogs, etc. Um, they're kind of all over the place and being able to, they're a, somehow like scientists in this series are able to kind of funnel into which kind of gene they want and they handpick it to create these augments. So these augments are created to basically be more superior but the one thing that sets them apart from humans other than their features obviously and their abilities is that they actually need to have a master without a master they cannot survive they actually want to die because that's how loyal they are I'm assuming that is from the dog gene uh, the loyalty gene and the reason why tool is so special which is stated from book one was that somehow he didn't have a master so this book really delves into the history of why he doesn't have a master also another thing I found out from this book is that his blood apparently has the ability to heal so now he can breathe underwater he has superior strength superior um, healing abilities he can heal really fast he can command other augments and now his blood has the ability to heal so apparently tool is this like miracle person i don't even know he can do everything basically is what i'm getting from this book <laughs> but the thing the one thing that i would say he's bad at and the one thing that i do find very endearing of tool is the fact that he is so bad at speaking politely to others. <laughs> There's so many times when he's just like lying there and he really needs help but he refuses to really ask for help and even though Malia, you know, this person that he has basically respected and really like cared for since book two is the one who's there to help him, he kind of still goes like, no, I don't need your help and like, you know, like he's just so brusque when he talks to people. It's actually really endearing to me and there are a lot of times when the way how he says like he has a very matter of fact way of speaking and because of his size and his strength and his looks the way how he says it always sets people into like fear even though he doesn't really mean it like that so in a way i found that like quite cute i guess if that makes any sense now as for the ending that ending was so intense i cannot believe what happened i feel like it was so okay first of all it's very action-packed and when things started finally happening it was so quick this book was also very fast paced like i said before so it wasn't there wasn't any moment in time when i felt like there was a lull in terms of plot it was always something ongoing and the end when he was when tool was there with the XCOM and mercier people 
oh my goodness there's just so much drama that happened all at once but like at the end i'm so glad that he was actually able to spare jones even though i'm not i'm a little ambivalent with her character i felt like she was just there more as an insider take on mercier um but i'm glad that he was able to have the sense to spare her because at this point he was kind of in this like blood rage i feel like he didn't seem like he really knew what he was doing other than killing everyone but somehow he managed to save her or at least spare her life because he she was the one who's able to actually help reconnect him with oko and molly at the end because they're actually taken so overall i feel like this review was not really a review it's more of a what i thought about the characters and the ending but overall i did find this book to be very enjoyable and because it was so fast paced i read it very quickly i would say i finished it within a day or so and the one thing i wonder after reading this the three books is I wonder if there will be a fourth book in this installment just because now that Tool has his ability to command other augments and it's actually hinted in this book that he kind of wants to um, overthrow the human rule on these augments because I mean it's not their fault that they have that they're created I mean clearly there's all scientific experiments and it's not their fault that they have this ability or inability to really think for themselves they have to really follow them, their master's orders but since tool is able to actually you know destroy that link and command them them himself i wonder if there will be a fourth book to showcase the overthrow of the human rule and if that's actually the case i think that'll be really interesting to read so hopefully the author will decide that there will be a fourth book i'm not really sure at this point i don't remember seeing that there's a fourth book but since this third one just came out back in October, I would say I won't expect anything for at least another year or so if there is a third, fourth book. But that is all I have to say for this book. If you agree with what I have to say or if you have any differing opinions or any comments you want to make about this book, please do leave it in the comments down below. But that is all I have to say for today. If you like this review, please do give me a thumbs up and subscribe down below. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. But yeah, that's it everyone. Thank you. Bye.